Welcome to the Artist Academy podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Earhart, and today we have a very special episode, and I just want to say, if this is your first ever episode of this podcast, we typically talk about tips on business, and I tell you how to make more profits and attract more customers, but today is a little bit different. It's a little dramatic. It can get a little negative at times. And I just want to preface this by saying, usually we're very upbeat. You know, I am very positive, but this is almost a year long episode in the making because this is a moment, a couple moments, (laughs) a long drawn out process really of me taking a customer to court. And it's only so positive that you can be throughout that process. I tried to keep it very much as a learning opportunity. And I thought it was very important for me to record every step of the way and just have honest, raw, real emotions throughout every step of this court process so that you can hear the worry and the stress and the the winning moments and all of everything that goes on with taking someone to court. It's it's a stressful experience. <laughs> and I recorded every step of the way, like I'm talking like hours before I went into the courtroom and within hours of me getting out of the courtroom and the filing process and what happens next and how nervous I was and what I would do differently and just the whole process of taking someone to court in an attempt to show you how stressful it is and to try to get people to avoid this whole thing and give you tips on how to do it better and just the whole thing. Anyway, I'll I explain this whole thing. It's an hour long episode. It's very long and drawn out, but if you want some drama in your life today, here we go. <laughs> and all right, let's just get into it. This is me taking a customer to court on the podcast. I am about to go to court in just a couple hours. And to give you a little backstory on that, I painted windows for, I don't want to say who it is, this is not meant to, you know, trash talk anyone or put anybody down in any way. I've just, throughout this whole experience, I have been like, ugh, stressing and just saying this is going to be a good podcast episode and a good learning moment for everybody else. And so I just really want to emphasize this is not to put down anybody and I'm going to try to be as unbiased as I can possibly be throughout this thing. But yeah, I'm about to go to court (laughs) in just a couple hours and I'm just really nervous about it. So I am now preparing all of my stuff. I have photos, I have a statement ready, and yeah, we're going to small claims court. I don't have a lawyer because you don't need a lawyer for small claims. If it's under $5,000, I believe, all you have to do is just go to, I believe it's our secret, no, it's our, you go to the circuit court, you go down there, you file a small claims, you say who it's for, and they serve them papers, and then you're both supposed to show up on the court date. We are going to explain it in front of a judge, my side, his side, and yeah, we'll see. I mean, I'm gonna get paid, but I just don't know. I, I'm just kind of nervous because I'm not sure exactly how it's gonna go, but just to give you a back of story again, sorry, I'm kind of nervous, so I'm just kind of going here and there, but I painted a set of windows. This was back in February, I believe. Yeah, February. And yeah, I'll just, okay, I'm just going to read to you my statement because that is basically what sums everything up. So here it is. It's typed out in front of me and I'm going to just read from it while I'm in court. Okay, so this is it. So person, so it says who it is in, the, in here, but I'm not going to say who it is. So business owner, person, hired me to paint four windows at blank for the agreed upon amount of $350. So when I arrived on site, I was given instructions to paint the entire storefront consisting of 18 windows. So much more than our four windows for $350 quote. They wanted the entire storefront painted. As I, so as I painted throughout the day, I was given instructions by business owner and two other employees of different holiday themed ideas (laughs) 
and I painted them in real time. After the job was complete, I explained that since we agreed upon 350 for just four windows and they asked for over double that amount of space, I realized that the restaurant industry, you know, might be hurting or whatnot, whatever their situation is. And I would normally charge 700 for this, but I was already, I just said that, you know, I'll just meet you in the middle at 500. We had agreed upon 350 for four windows. When I got there, they said, you know, paint the entire storefront, which is 18 windows, which was over double. I spent a lot of time on this and I was like, hey, just throw in an extra 150 of what we already suggested and we'll call it good. I am genuinely always trying to give someone a deal, okay? (laughs) Okay, anyway, so business owner denied my request and then offered to pay me just $200 since that is what they paid the previous window painter. So to give you a little bit of a backstory on that too, for Christmas windows, they asked me to paint it. I was too busy, so I hooked them up with a student and quoted them $250 for her to come paint just an all-white, no-color, simple winter scene. So I explained the difference in the cost and I had actually already explained the difference when I gave them the $350 quote saying that me using color, it's going to need two coats. It's just going to take longer. And you know, I had quoted you 350 already and you said, okay, not 200 like the previous artist did. They said that since, you know, it took her a lot more time than it took me, then they don't feel like I am it's worth 350 or 500 or whatever. Uh, They really only have $200 for a budget. And I said, okay, well, (laughs) um, it took her a long time because she's a student. I've been doing this full time for over seven years. And so I'm much faster. And so I I just, I explained that. And yeah, I also offered because I could feel the heat. I was like, okay, they're really not one to pay much more. How else can I go? I was already giving them a $200 discount. I was like, okay, I will give you, I mean, if you want to pay me $100 in just gift cards as partial payment, you know, to help make up the difference, I'm fine with that. Your food was great. I ate lunch there. I paid for my own lunch there. So, and I, so I complimented their food. I tried to de-escalate the situation, but also I really wasn't going to accept $200. So (laughs) I'm trying to meet him in the middle here. And however, the business owner denied. He then stated that he was not going to pay at all because he did not think the job was complete without me coming back to paint even more. Specifically, I can't, okay, yeah. Well, okay, if I say exactly what they wanted me to do, you'll probably know what it is, so I'm just not gonna say it. Anyway, it was just this little bitty thing that would have probably taken me 30 minutes to an hour. They wanted a theme, they wanted an image that would go with the theme, however, I had already, so I explained, I was like, I've already painted so much of your windows. There's really not much room for that unless you want it really tiny. So I'm not, so it was just odd that they were requesting me to come back and paint more. So I explained that, you know, I'm already giving you a discount and for me to come back and paint more, it would mean that I'm spending more time on this and I would need to charge you. Like I said, I feel like I'm already giving you a good deal. Plus, at no point before that did they say that any element needed to be included for the job to be complete. There was no mention. All day long, we, you know, they they said, hey, yeah, paint this. And I was like, oh, cool. And then I, I thought of some ideas and I ran it by them. Hey, should I paint this? Yeah, sure, do whatever. Make it cool. We don't care. Like, it seemed to be very going very well I didn't think that any element needed to be included so I explained that to him and said you know if you want to pay me more like I'll I'll gladly come back and do whatever you want and he denied so he did not like that at all that's kind of where the turning point was he was like we are on completely different you know sides of this we think of this completely different ways you're now wanting more to complete a job that you didn't complete and I was like whoa 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 (laughs) yeah I filled your windows with all of the it looks so cute (laughs) like it looks really good and it's full and so I don't know if he was trying to find a loophole or what but he basically just said no we're not paying because we don't think it's complete so now like both of us are pissed off and I was like okay I'm done with this I sent them a $500 invoice and I said, pay whatever. I'm done arguing. I'm done with this. And, you know, this is my biased opinion, but they were being very rude. And I will never go to this bar again from the way that they talked to me. So I sent the invoice, said, I'm done with this. Anyway, they ignored it for 30 days. 
So a whole month goes by, nothing. And I'm telling you, if I would have received $350, I would have been cool with it. I would have been like, whatever. So anyway, a month goes by and they ignored it. So I messaged them again and I said, hey, you know, you've ignored my invoice. <laughs> like, you got to pay. Like there's, you know, I, I will, you know, pursue this until you pay. And they said, okay, if you send us a $350 invoice, we will pay. So at this point, I'm mad. I'm just like, oh, you want me to spend more time sending you another invoice? Like just pay me something. Anyway, so I used the $500 invoice and I put minus 150 to equal 350. And in the minus, I put refusing to pay the artist for the extra amount that they requested on site. So I sent it to them. And then I put their message in my like general folder. This was all on Instagram, by the way. They were just messaging me on Instagram and I just ignored it. I was like, whatever, they're gonna pay the 350, it's gonna be done. So I, yeah, 30 days goes by again. I go back and I, to message them again and I noticed that they had messaged me not long after saying that I was so unprofessional. I do not deserve to be paid anything because of the way I'm acting. <laughs> And my, I never cussed at them, you know, I never gave them a ton of attitude. I was just like, hey, like, I, this is what I did. I need to be paid. And I wasn't backing down. So, yeah, so they said, we're not paying, take us to court. So now, here we are. So now, <laughs> since it was denied again, here we are. And I am going to be asking for the full amount of $700 plus court costs. $700 is what I would charge anybody any day of the week for the any amount, for this amount of painting that was done. I spent a lot of time. I actually hired help on it too. And that's what it's worth. And that's what I would charge anybody else. Plus it's the headache of it now. <laughs> so they're going to be paying court costs. Okay. That is what I have prepared that is what I'm going to stay in court. Probably a lot more concise. What I have written down is just like two minutes worth of speaking because um, I'm going to be nervous. <laughs> so I'm dragging my husband along with me because I need him for emotional support on this one. Um, yeah, so here we go. We're about to go in two hours. And if I were to predict how it's going to go, I'm going to guess that I'm going to get maybe... It's going to be, I'm going to get $700, $500, or $350. There's absolutely no way that I'm not going to get paid by these people because it's in writing and I have printed off our whole conversation of them being very rude to me and I've, the judge has it and they have this statement, they have the notes where I'm bringing pictures. Plus, they posted five different photos on their Instagram of the of the paintings that I did for them to promote their event. So they obviously liked it and they used it for promotion and it helped them. So there's no way I'm not gonna get money from this. It's in writing. However, what I did do wrong and what I'm not gonna say in court, but I mean, this is what I did wrong and this is how I could have avoided this. And I know this and I want, this is why I wanna tell you this. It's good that I have it in writing. However, I should have had a contract and I should have had them sign it because they were confused on the total amount. I don't know, I didn't expect that. That's never happened to me before, but they have like business partners. So I think, you know, with, with more people to communicate with, information gets lost. So when I arrived, I should have had the contract printed out that said 350 for four windows. And I also should have spoken up and said, okay, it's going to be double since you want over double painted. I just assumed that they knew that. It's my bad for not speaking up, and it's my bad for not giving them a contract that clearly states what it is before I started. Even though we've talked about it and they agreed upon it before, like it should have been in writing because then I could have just given that to them and they probably would have paid it. Or they would have said, hey, no, like we can't spend $700. You just don't, you know, don't paint that much or whatever. Or they wouldn't have had me paint at all. I don't know how it would have went. But that's, those are my mistakes in that. I'm not sure how it's going to go. There's no way I'm not going to get paid for this because I did the work. There's agreed upon amount. And yeah, but it's my fault for not, you know, stating it more clearly. That's why a contract is important. However, in my seven years plus of being an artist, I've never had to do this. So this is a learning experience for me. You know, as you grow as an artist, as I grow as an artist, there's always a hurdle. There's a next hurdle. There's a bigger project. And 
it was bad on me to not give them a contract even though it was such a tiny, <laughs> tiny, tiny project. Really, I'm at a point right now where if anything is under $1,000, it really just doesn't excite me, and I think it's a small project. That's where I'm at in my mural career. Like, if things are over, over 1000 if I need to do sketches, I'm having them pay a deposit. At this point, at this one, usually the window painting is so easy and just so smooth, and it's not permanent, so there's really no need for sketches. I didn't expect them to be picky like that. We are in the Midwest where a handshake is good for the majority of things. However, I now realize that that is not the case in, you know, for everybody. So those are the mistakes that I made. Anyway, okay, so we'll see how it goes. I know that I'm going to at least get 350. I'm hoping for 500 and I'm asking for 700. People have advised me, you know, ask for the moon and then you'll get somewhere in the middle. So that's what I'm doing. Um... Overall, this is just a lot of headache, and I've stressed on and off over this for the last two, two months, three months. It's just a lot of unwanted stress that could have been avoided. It's not even, I mean, it's about the money, but it's, it's about like, you know, sticking up for myself and just, uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, I'm done blabbering about it. That's what happened, and we're going to see what happens here in about two hours, so... Yeah. Ugh. I don't like public speaking. My mouth is dry. Ugh. Okay, here we go. <sighs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay. Now I'm going to turn this off and yeah, it all, I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back in a couple hours to let you know how it goes. All right. Wish me luck. <laughs> okay. Okay, part two. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I just got through with court and I am so glad that is over. Oh my gosh. So super nervous. So I just want to tell, tell you about it because um, I had never been to court before, so I didn't know what to expect. And what I had imagined in my head was completely different <laughs> of how it went. So I had prepared a like a document, like a speech, basically, like a big paragraph speech to say, I thought I was going to have to plead my case. Um, but no. So <laughs> we go up there and where we go in this courtroom and there's people in court, like not our case. There's like other people in the room. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh no. So we had to sit through the first court case that was like running late and we listened to theirs, which was <laughs> just hilarious. Not going to say much more about it but <laughs> there was no judgment or anything like yeah there's no judgment made on that one because they were both kind of a mess so it got, I was like I just got to see what you don't do in court um they had a bunch of emotional court cases or court things that they were saying like oh he owes me for you know emotional distress and I was just like oh my gosh so anyway it was like 30 minutes later we had to hear that it was running late so they called us up there and first off in my head I had imagined me standing there or me yeah standing there by myself and reading a paper like giving a speech and I was on the right side no plaintiff which is me is on the left side of the judge so um but in my head it was just totally different so we went we sat down the judge basically just started asking me questions. So I got to go first and he was like, okay, so tell me what happened. Like, tell me, so you painted blah, blah, blah. Did you paint this? How much did you paint that? How much did you quote them? And I, so I told him, and so it was really just a question and answer thing. And I had learned from watching the court case before me not to elaborate on anything that's not hard facts, which we, we knew that, but <laughs> the court case before us, they were like talking about a lot of emotion and just involving a lot of drama that had nothing to do with like how much somebody owed another person. So I knew that he was not going to have any of my like, ah, he said this and he was rude or whatever. Like, so I just didn't. So I just answered yes, no. And then anytime he wanted me to explain, I just explained in the shortest amount of time possible and kept the hard facts in there. So just a lesson in le like, that's all people care about in court is the hard facts, how much you can prove they owed you. So as we're going along, 
Um, yeah, so they then they started asking him questions, and he it was there was a couple of things where I was like, no, <laughs> um, no, we did not discuss price, right? So anyway, so but and I tried to speak up, and the judge was like, now that's not how it works. You have to let him talk. I was like, okay, I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is my first time. <laughs> anyway, so anyway, I shut up, but he could kind of tell when like I didn't agree with something because my head would kind of like turn and I was like, what the heck? No. So he knew what questions to ask me afterwards. So I went first, then they asked the defendant, <laughs> the, the guy questions, and then he came back to me and he basically asked me, he's like, is there anything else you want me to know? And I was like, nope. <laughs> those are the hard facts and so I was like nope I am not messing this up with any kind of feelings so yeah and everything went great um so it's kind of weird though right now because so there is like a weird middle ground he like of like who owes what like I mentioned we agreed on 350 um then I did double however he mentioned he's like so you didn't tell them that it was going to be double and I was like no he's like you know that this could have been you know, um, avoided with a contract, right? And I was like, yes. The judge literally told both of us that. He was like, you guys should have had a contract. And we were both like, we know. We kind of like held our heads low. I was like, okay. So yeah, he's he seemed really like, so it's very apparent that they're going to owe me money. So, and he made made known of that because he asked the defendant, he's like, so you haven't paid her anything? He goes, no. He's like, do you agree that you owe her something? He goes, yes. So we don't know how much right now. The judge said he wanted to think about it um, and he would let us know within the week what the judgment is on CaseNet. So that's what's going to happen. I don't know how much I'm going to be paid, but it's going to be something. If I had to guess, and again, I don't know what it is right now, but if I had to guess, it'd be probably right in the middle of like 500 because um, it's going to be minimum 350 I don't know if he'll do the whole 700 because he's kind of like, you know, you, you didn't have a contract. That's bad. I'm like, I know. But um, overall, it went great. I was so nervous. But yeah, once I started speaking, it was fine. Like I so said, in the first, I like stuttered and like was like, yes, I uh, like at first. And then after we got going, I was like, okay, like I can do this. And yeah, so there it is. I will let you know in a week how it goes and just make sure to have a contract. <laughs> That's all I got to say because I'm going to have a contract from now on. So yeah, okay, I will let you know in part three in just a second. Ugh, this is such a long drawn out process. Whatever. Okay, to be continued. Part three of this court case. So just to let you know, there's going to be a part four. <laughs> This is being dragged out so far. Okay, so I actually received the judgment about a month ago now. So a whole month has passed and well, actually about two, I don't know, a while has passed since I have sat down and recorded. And <laughs> so I received the judgment and you just check case net and it shows the judgment on there and then you get a letter in the mail and it just lets you know who won. Well, I won <laughs> and they are giving me $500 plus court costs, which is what I asked for in the first place. Actually, I originally asked for $500 for my, my window painting um, efforts <laughs> or results and they said no and then I went down to 350 as you know and they said no and blah, blah, blah. So now they're having to pay $500 plus court costs. I messaged them on Instagram since that was our main, our only point of contact was on Instagram because that's what the court tells you to do. They, it tells me, the plaintiff, to notify them that they need to pay me because the court will not do that. It'll update CaseNet, but it's up to us to check CaseNet and receive the stuff in the mail to know. So I... And I will just read you verbatim exactly what I sent. I said, here's the judgment and here's our new invoice. $500 for window painting. And then there's a little court fees down there too. And that was kind of my like, haha. <laughs> but I didn't say anything else. There's no, you know, red lettering on there. There's no like middle finger. There's nothing. I was just like, here's the invoice. Here is the... And then also I said, note the change of address from the previous invoice. This is the updated one because in this whole slide time span, I have moved, we have gone to court. It's been a lot of time has passed. So there we go. <laughs> 
what? They replied saying that they will be suing me because of defamation for making false Google reviews towards their business while pending litigation. So, mind you, I have not made anything. Nobody on any social media knows anything. I did not make a bad Google review, nothing. What happened was I was telling my brother-in-law about this. We were in the airport and we were coming back for something and I was like, oh, I'm super nervous for court. It's on Wednesday. Um, oh, this is like, I, they're making me take them to court in order to get paid anything. And he goes, oh, that's annoying. I was like, yeah, I know. I was just like, I was telling my family about it. And so I guess at some point he went on and made a Google review about them saying how people shouldn't visit them because they don't pay their contractors. But I did not tell him to go do that. I just, and he's, it's so funny because he's like the nicest guy. <laughs> he's my husband's brother and he's just so quiet and nice and just a really nice guy. The last person you would think would go do something like this. And so anyway, he went on there. I had no idea. So in court, actually, they brought it up. They're like, her family is, you know, making false accusations or no, not false accusations are leaving bad reviews. And anyway, so they also said another name on here, which I won't um, say because I don't actually know this person. They're like, they actually claimed that I knew this person who was also making false, you know, and saying that they're going to be suing him too. And I was like, well, I, I don't know who that is. So obviously it's not just me that you're making mad and they have 20 to 50 other bad reviews. So it's not just me. Anyway. They go, you can expect a cease and desist letter to your new address along with any following correspondence. So they said they're going to sue me and or send a cease and desist letter, which are two very different things. You cannot sue someone if you're sending them a cease and desist letter. That's just, it, it's literally a letter that says, stop talking bad about us, which I have not done. They're one of those people that just has to have the last say in the argument and they're trying to get a win. So, and I said, if this is the route you want to go, then go for it. But I have said nothing negative about you online, so my conscience is clean. Feel free to send the cease and desist letter with your check and I'll consider this measure closed. Good luck. That was it. That's all that was said. And I was just like, I'm done with this. Whatever. I'm, I'm going to get a check and I'm going to get a cease and desist letter. Great. <laughs> Whatever. I've just wasted so much time on this. So. A month later, nothing has come, nothing, a no check, and they, the court says that they have 10 days or else I can go in and you know, get payment in some other way. I can file something. Anyway, I was like, whatever, they'll eventually pay. Kind of forgot about it. It's not worth my time anymore. So then I received just yesterday a letter in the mail saying that it was a, what was it, court de novo something. I don't know. It basically means that they're appealing. So they don't like this judgment that was just passed. And so they're appealing. And I was like, okay, what is this? So I look it up and I have to go up here in court again. So we're basically having a new judge and a new, a whole new thing. And so I was talking to some people about it and I was like, okay, what is this? Like, do I actually have to go? Like they've already, you know, they've already done this. Like we, we've been through this already. He's lost. Like what? And so, yes, I have to go. What'll probably happen, what I'm guessing is going to happen, like I guessed the last time, is he will probably have an attorney present, which means that he is paying an attorney to come. However, in small claims court, it is very clear that if you do not have an attorney present, they will not hold that against you and they will make sure that you know the rules and the rights. So, I am not going to bother with getting an attorney. Um, I'm just going to go. And if the attorney wants to bring up whatever, whatever, it, it doesn't matter. Like I know that I need to be paid for this and it's going to be in my favor in some way. If they change the amount, whatever, that's just, I don't, I don't know. So hopefully they, I reschedule it and hopefully I'll be able to go and just fight my case again. But this time I'm going in much more confident and much more annoyed because at this point this is just annoying that someone is doing this he can't just take a loss he's wanting to send me a letter sue me take me back to court like there's just there's comes a time in business when you just gotta say okay and pay your bills that's it 
So again, I'm not going to say who it is, but if you're a local artist and you want to know, I will tell you because a local artist needs to know before doing any of these, you know, before doing business with these people again, I will tell you who it is. That way you can be more prepared than I was. Learn from my mistakes. This is not about bashing someone, although I am obviously annoyed with this. This is not about bashing someone. This is about a bad experience that I am having because of a mistake that I made of not having a contract. And also just not having a contract with someone who is a very difficult person in general. I was just so relieved to have this off my plate. And now it's just, I'm just annoyed to have, have it back on. Anyway, use a contract. Okay, I will be back and to give you hopefully the fourth and final update to this. Okay, bye. Hello again. Oh my gosh, I have so much to tell you. Okay, so it is currently mid-October when I have just gotten out of our second court hearing. So as you know, it's, it's, okay, this is so crazy. Okay. Um, okay, so as you know, they I got a letter saying that they were going to take me back to court since they didn't like that they the judge said they were going to have to pay $500 plus court costs. They didn't like that, so they filed again and... It was supposed to be a date when I was actually out of town, and luckily I got the paper before I went out of town, so I filed it for a continuance, or I don't, I don't know what lawyer terms are, but and it got um, postponed, so it was postponed a month and a half away, so which meant that I had a month and a half to be annoyed by this and know that it's coming up and all of that. And I would absolutely love to come on here and tell you that I knew I was going to win and it was just annoying and whatever, it didn't matter, but I was so nervous and I was arguing with them in my head for weeks. I mean, anytime my brain was just left to do nothing, anytime I was just like not busy, so I, my mind would just often, every few days, just kind of like wander to this court case and just be like know that I was having it coming up and just arguing with them in my head and just not sure how it would go like are they gonna have a lawyer like oh I would I was just stressing out about it and again I would love to come on here and tell you that it doesn't bother me on like even on like the low chance that they ever actually listen to this I would love to just have a poker face at this but that's just not how it was it's just not who I am <laughs> and Usually I can brush things under the rug really easily and talk myself down and be like, no, it's not a big deal. But this, I just couldn't over and over in my head. I was, I just, I think what was happening was my body and my brain were remembering the stress that my body was under when I was in the courtroom the last time. And it knew that I was going to have to go there again and sit on that cold bench again and wait for my turn and then go and present. And like, I was just so, I don't like confrontation. So it has bothered me so much in the last month and a half and more so in the last few weeks just like a counting down and then the last couple of days, like just to let you know, like TMI, but I've had like bad bowel movements and like it just, it bothered me so much. Like I had to like calm down last night. I like took a bath and like just to calm down, I was irritable and then I got a really great night's sleep and we went to court today. So this is where it gets crazy. Oh my gosh, this is insane. Like Okay, let me try to like get my thoughts together. So I'll just go in order. So we go there and my court date was at 1.30, same building as the last time and different floor. We were on the third floor last time, second floor this time, whatever, we're doing it again. And my, the whole time I'm walking in there, I'm like, th I'm literally thinking this is going to be over in an hour. Like this, I just, and then I'm like, okay, this is going to be over in 30 minutes. I'm just counting down. Like it will be over soon and I can go live my life. Like I knew I was going to win. I knew, I just didn't know what dollar amount. Anyway, so trial de novo is basically just having a brand new court case with a brand new judge and basically just dismissing the complete, like everything that we had talked about or anything or the, the judgment and everything from the small claims court case. So the new judge 
is not supposed to know anything. And it, we're just going to argue at, argue it exactly the same. Well, we get in there. It's a bigger courtroom and it's just a bigger space. And we're in there, we're waiting and I'm just waiting. Like we're just, I'm so nervous working up to it. The judge comes in and then we go up there and there's a, so a couple other lawyers were in the room, two other lawyers. Okay. Just two. And I look over and I was like, wait, I think I know that lawyer. It's my friends. One of my really good friends is best friend. She is that lawyer. I was like, Megan, that's Megan. And anyway, so I, I get called up to the bench and she, she hears my name. And so she looks over at me and we wave at each other. We're like, hi, oh my gosh. Anyway, I just thought it was really weird that I knew another lawyer in this small courtroom that nobody else was in. We were the only two in there. I'm like, what are the odds? This plays a big part in it. <laughs> this was the, the part of the story that mattered. So we go up there and the judge asks me like, hey, would you like, would you like to try to talk this out with the client before we actually have a trial? I was like, your honor, you know, we've, we've tried this and we've actually had a previous court hearing where the judgment he did not like. So we've, we've tried this. He was like, okay. So he looks to the other guy, the person that I am going after the customer, my customer has hired a lawyer. So he had an attorney present. I did not. I had, it was just me and my husband there. And actually the judge asked my husband to go sit on the bench. He was not allowed to sit up there with me here, which was odd. I thought that was a little odd because during the small claims court, my husband was allowed to just be right beside me just for emotional support, whatever. So it was just me up there by myself, standing tall, like, okay, here we go. And then he looks to the lawyers, like, does your client wish to talk this out with um, Miss Sanders? Since my name is Andrea Sanders now, if you don't know that, I got married. <laughs> um, and they said, yes, we would love a chance to talk it over. So I just looked at him and I was like, okay, I, I'm willing to hear what you want to hear. So I go in this tiny little room with the attorney. So not my customer, not the judge, anybody. It's just this really, really tiny room, like connected to the courtroom that we were in. And so it's just me and this attorney in this room. And he says, look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the judge that you don't have a lawyer with you. And so he's going to throw this case out. And I'm like, what? Like, I, I'm immediately confused. So I just very politely, I go to him. I was like, how do you know that? Are, are you sure he's going to do that? He's like, well, I'm pretty sure he's going to do that. And because that's what the law states, you need to have an attorney present to be in this court. He's like, this is big boy court. This isn't small claims court anymore. You need a lawyer. I was like, okay. He's like you're 100%. He goes, I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure. I was like, okay. He's like, well, unless I won't do that to you unless you take my offer of $350. My client is willing to pay that and we won't do a court today and it'll just be dismissed. I was like, you realize that if he would have paid me anything prior to this court date, we wouldn't be here, right? I was like, you realize that your client, I sent him an invoice for $350 and he refused to pay it. I was like, why is he wanting to pay it right now? Why is he, why did he wait until we're in court to do this? He's like, this is our offer, take it or leave it. I was like, well, my response to that is if you would have gave me that offer before today, I would have taken it. I gladly, I did not want to come to court today, but since we're here, let's go out and see what they say. He was like, okay, but as soon as we leave this room, it's not like my offer is not going to stand anymore. I was like, I'll take my bets. <laughs> so we go out into the courtroom again and we tell him that a deal has not been made. And he immediately tells the judge, she does not have a lawyer present. We cannot go, go on with this. And the judge goes, ah, you're right. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> this time I was like, oh man. I like, I tried to call his bluff and he, he, he's calling mine. Like this is gonna, it's gonna get dismissed. And the judge was like, so I will allow a continuance if you can find, you know, for you to come back with a lawyer. And so I turn around to Megan and she's gone. But I look at my husband who had just talked to her, I guess, while, while we were, while we were talking in the room and my husband goes, sir, we have a lawyer. I was like, yes. So I tell 
the judge, he's like, you have a lawyer. I was like, yes, sir. Um, my friend Megan was just here and she will represent me. He goes, how long will it take you to get a lawyer? I was like, two minutes. He goes, okay. I was like, so, okay. So we go outside the courtroom. So he, he allows a pause or a recess or whatever. And we go outside the courtroom. We call Megan because as we were in there, she had actually just left really quick, but she, she told my husband, call me if they try to pull something on her and I'll come back. So she came back and I briefed her on what was going on. I told her, hey, this is the amount we agreed, on, agreed upon. This is what they said. I just briefed her very quickly. She says, okay, I, I've got this. Let's go. I was like, okay, let's go. So we go back in the courtroom and I am like just thinking how freaking lucky I am in this moment. Like, And even still right now, I'm just thinking, wow, this is the luckiest, <laughs> like I consider myself a very lucky person, but this, this is next level. This, the fact that I happened to know this lawyer and also she, her best friend happens to be a painter too. So she already knows the whole like painting routine and like how things go and you know, just the whole thing. So she's, she knows my line of work. And I was just like, what? And so we go back in and Megan just states that she will be my lawyer and we start going. And let me tell you, I have learned so much about court today and I'm just excited that I can possibly maybe help someone here that's listening to be able to enlighten you on this process because it was nothing like small claims court. So we get there and Megan is my lawyer. And so the lawyers, the attorneys, my attorney and her attorney, or his, the customer's attorney, they're doing the talking the whole time. Like me and, and the customer are not talking. Um, and so we do the thing. We They call a witness. So my lawyer says she would like to put me on the stand. So I have to go up beside the judge, just like in the movies. This did not happen in small claims court. In small claims court, we were right beside each other, left and right, and that, that, that was it. We didn't go up to the judge. We weren't like on the stand, nothing. It was small claims and it was very simple. This was actual like Judge Judy courtness. <laughs> so I go up to the stand, I swear under oath, and then she starts asking me questions. She, and which I, she had breached me. She's like, I'm just going to start asking you questions so I understand. And so you can just tell them rather than my attorney telling them what's going on. She's like, I, I want you to tell them. I was like, okay. So she just, we start going over it. I tell them my whole story. I'm not going to bother you with the story again because it's the same thing. And then I get cross-examined by the customer's attorney. So he comes up and he's trying to make me say certain things to try to make it look bad. And I was not doing it. I mean, I was just like, no, this is the price. He's like, but did you? And it was just so. And then I go down and then they call up my customer and he's cross-examined by both parties and just to spare you the two hour argument, we were in there for two hours, which was much longer than I thought was going to happen. Like small claims court lasted, I don't know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, maybe. I, I, I can't remember. It was over a month ago, but this was two hours of arguing back and forth. And let me tell you, they were talking about technicalities, just the words that we were using, the exact phrases, just these little bitty things that were just silly to argue over, but for some reason made a big different, I don't know. So we argued back and forth and it was just crazy because they said so many lawyer terms and like they would present evidence and they would have numbers and letters on the evidence and I was just like, uh, and they would object. So anytime that I, I would say something and then, and the, the, their, their lawyer would try to object and it was just, it was crazy. Like spare you the details, but in the end there was no judgment and he, just like the last time he will he said he had to decide on what amount would be fair. So I'm getting paid. Like the minimum I'm going to be paid is $350. The maximum is going to be $700 plus fees. We'll see. If I had to guess, I'd say it's probably the same as last time. $500 plus fees. But my lawyer let me know that I can also ask for 9% 
above the rate of whatever is awarded because of so much time lapsed. So because I have a lawyer, she is going to help me do that as well. So I'm getting more. But the best part about this is, so I just want to like emphasize this too. Just, we argued for two hours. I had a free lawyer. I know this girl. She, and afterwards I was like, let me pay you. You did amazing. Thank you so much. And she did. She did. She was a shark. Like anytime they, they would try to rebuttal, she was like, object. This is why. No, you cannot say that. Like she was on it. I did not have to say any, hardly anything. She was just, she was so amazing just to see her be like, bam, <laughs> like she was so great. And so afterwards I was like, let me pay you. Just let, let me know what your rate is. She's like, no, 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 no. Again, we're, we're, we're friends of friends. So she was just like, I'm just, I'm happy to help. She was, she was like, they are trying to take advantage of you. And this is why I'm a lawyer is to help people like this. I'm like, oh my God, thank you so much. So I'm going to get her a very nice bottle of wine and a gift card to her favorite restaurant in town. I've already inquired with our mutual friend on what to get her as a surprise I'm paying her even though she would not accept my money anyway so I I am paying her in that way but it is nowhere near the lawyer fees that my customer had to pay for his lawyer lawyer fees are $200 plus and we were in there for two hours plus they they consulted beforehand like he is paying well over the 350 500 whatever i'm if i had to just guess it's going to be a thousand dollar bill for him with my cost and the lawyer and that's what you get for being a freaking shitty person and trying to take advantage of an artist now i will say i did this i stuck up for myself and i'm going to promote it on, on on my social media just to say you know like you can't push people around like this you cannot do this but I never want to do this again. <laughs> I am going to do everything in my power to not go to court. I hope you can hear it in my voice of just like the, the anxiety of it and just take to heart just everything that I'm saying of just like they, like this whole thing, it stole my happiness. It stole my peace for the last while and I hate that it did that and I tried to talk myself out of it so much and I know I realize that this is not a big deal as compared to you know parents going into a custody battle and fighting over their kids or you know if I was fighting over ten thousand dollars or you know, if I had to go to you know, if I was actually going to maybe go to jail or whatever, like this is petty. Like the, my court case is nothing. We were arguing over less than a thousand dollars and it was absolutely nothing. It does not matter in the scheme of things. And I would tell you, I tried to talk myself. I told myself that over and over. And I tried to talk myself out of feeling the way that I did, just that uneasiness, but I couldn't do it. And one thing actually, so I'm in the middle of writing my book right now. And I just thought, I was like, this is such weird timing how this is happening two months before my book is released. This is going in the book. And I was thinking, wow, like this whole experience, this is going to help someone. And I'm sad that I have to go through this, but I feel like a lot of things that I've had to go through, I've had to learn the hard way. And that's why I share it is because I don't want you going through this. And now I know that you can't just take someone to small claims court and you, you know, you get what you want. That's what I thought was going to happen. No, they can appeal it. And then a lawyer is required, which is more money. I would have had to pay more money. And it's just, it's just not worth that. You know, it's just, eh. so that's that. <laughs> if you, if someone doesn't pay you and you want to take them to small claims court, even if you win, they can then appeal it because they had, what, a week or two to appeal it. And that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to scare me into not going forward with this. And that's what most people will do. That's what I would want to do. I just, I, I would have had to think about it. If I would have had to get a lawyer, I probably would have done it out of principle, <laughs> but I would have been out so much more money and it would just, it would have been fighting over nothing. It would have been, it would have been a fighting in court to then give the lawyer the money that I would have earned. And they knew that they knew that. And they were hoping that I would back down. Let me tell you the, I just, I cannot get over the luck of Megan just happened to be in the courtroom and happened to be like, let me help you for free. 
I just, this could not have worked out any better, but (laughs) I know that luck will not be in my favor again. This is my learning moment and this is your learning moment too. But let me tell you, the looks on their faces (laughs) whenever Megan came in and was like, I will be representing Miss Sanders. It was a deer in headlights moment. My customer was like, oh shit. (laughs) This was not supposed to go like this. You could just say that like his lawyer prepped him. It's like, okay, we're going to go. She's not going to have a lawyer. And then I'm going to, I'm going to tell her she has to have one and then we're done. And then (laughs) when Megan showed up and was like, excuse me. Yes, I will. They were like, oh no, like we're going to, anyway, this is my experience. I'm going to do one more because I have not yet gotten paid from it. So, and my lawyer, Megan, my attorney, she was talking about, you know, ways that if they don't want to pay that we can make them pay. And anyway, so that, that process has not been done yet. So I still have to collect and the final judgment still needs to be done. So I'm going to do one more after this. And hopefully I have the check in hand when I am recording this for you. And I'm going to make a copy of it and frame it or something because this is just, this is the worst process. It's terrible. I hate it. But I just want to end on this really quick. 99% of my customers are amazing. Oh, they are so amazing. And then it just, it's just the law of numbers. You're just going to get one bad apple every once in a while. And this is my bad apple and it's definitely a learning experience. So, okay, I will be back hopefully in like a couple weeks. <laughs> Hopefully not a couple of months. Hopefully it's over in a couple weeks and I'll let you know how it goes. A final update on this court stuff. They have paid. I sent an invoice and they ignored it for a month. (laughs) Surprise. So I sent a reminder and they ignored me for a couple weeks. And then I randomly one day got a notification from my PayPal saying that they sent me the full amount plus court costs. Minus a PayPal fee. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So there was like $17 of a PayPal fee. I'm like, that it's just, I know what they're doing. They, they know that PayPal charges me a fee. So they did that. So and I don't know why, <laughs> just whatever, but the, the invoice asked to send a check. I even noted the address change. I don't know. So they sent a PayPal fee, whatever. They, that just goes to show who, what kind of people we're dealing with, right? So I messaged them back and said, hey, like PayPal is not an accepted form of payment unless my customer takes on the fee. Can you please reimburse? They have ignored it. But at this point, and my, my lawyer is taking care of it. My lawyer is going to go after him for the $17 because that's what she likes to do. She's like, these people need to learn a lesson. They can't take advantage of you. And I'm like, I'm just glad it's done. <laughs> like, but it's done. It's January of 2022 right now. And it, so this is over a year later. Or no, sorry, almost a year later. I painted for them in February of 2021, almost a year later and a lot of headaches later. I'm so glad it's over with. But you know what's funny? Now that we're at the end of this, I have definitely learned my lesson. And so I know to make things extremely clear. But just to add on to this, I actually had a recent experience with a customer and it very, very rare do, you know, interactions go wrong, but this one did and they didn't like their, they didn't like what they got. They were literally going up to my lettering that I had just painted for them and they were like two inches away from it, pointing it out. They brought out a ruler saying how it was uneven in this spot and they were going really close to it and just pointing out the imperfections. And I, I was like, no, like it's hand done. Like if it's not vinyl, like it's not going to be perfect, perfect, but you have a really good product. If you stand back five feet and you look at it, this letter and letter looks really good. And they just would get up really close to it. And I was like, wow, I've never had a customer get up so close and pick my work apart like this. It just made me feel like it unworthy, like inadequate. I just like, plus like I had this court experience in the back of my mind. So I learned from that and I just approached this in a very nice way. I knew exactly what to say, exactly what not to say. You know, I wasn't saying that I was just going to do everything for free and blah, 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 or anything, but I was like, let's, you know, I'm on your side. Let me know how to, how to fix this for you. And we went back and forth about it and it just came back to, you know, they were pointing out tiny imperfections and I was like look 
you don't want this hand done. You want vinyl. So after much debate, nice debate, I had like four people around me at the time too. And I was like, my heart was beating. I felt like I was, I don't know. It was just a very, it was just a very weird experience. Like I just, it was like four people around me just nitpicking my art. And I just felt kind of ganged up on, even though they weren't meaning to do that. I just wanted to get out of there so fast. I did not like it. And I just felt really uncomfortable, it just, which is very rare for this anything like this to happen and so I was just so like submissive I just did not want to go to court again that was in the back of my mind and I left the office being like so sorry you know because they're they were gonna have to redo the wall and they were because like I had painted on it and they had at the end of it they had actually decided that the design that I gave them that they okayed was not the design they wanted anyway like I'm telling you this customer was very picky like it was almost impossible it was gonna be impossible I was just walking away slowly and at the end of it I was just like okay I'm just not gonna charge them like they they weren't happy with it I'm just not gonna charge them and it actually took my husband (laughs) Ryan to be like yes you are I was like no like I just don't want any kind of like I don't want them to argue or anything and he was like what and I so I just I just told him I'm like look I just I feel like I have what what is it P what is it um that thing where you're like affected by traumatic things that have happened even though this wasn't like crazy traumatic but it it kind of was (laughs) to my little like heart but it was I was just like I was affected by it and I was like I think it's affecting now going forward you know, in a good way, I've learned, learned my lesson, but in a bad way, I'm like kind of almost letting people walk over me because I don't want to end up in court again. <laughs> and he's like, so we just talked about it and I ended up charging them. I ended up charging them like, I don't know, 40% or 30, 30 to 40% of what I was going to charge them because really like they weren't happy with it. I was like, whatever, like I, I, I'm still going to get paid something. And so I gave them the invoice. They didn't say anything back. I'm sure they didn't like it, but now they're going to pay it. So uh, whatever. So, but I just want to show you like this, this whole experience It's taught me a lot, but and now like having to reteach myself, like how to stick up for myself in the nicest way and just to actually be like, no, it's okay. Like not everything is going to end up in court. But anyway, I just want to share that little last bit. That's it. This is kind of a long one, but this is my whole experience. And just, if anything, this is just kind of a reminder to you that like, no matter what level you're at, there's always going to be a new thing to go over but a lot of the times you know this is this is still the best career in the world I would not change this even though I have some bad days there's so many more good days than bad and I hope you take my experience and learn from it in some way and again you know this is not to demean anybody or talk bad about customers or anything like my customers are so great 99% of the time but sometimes you just you know and well even like in this last instance with, with the really picky customers I was just like I'm not the artist for you and it ended up ending fine like they they you know they sent me messages like no like we really respect your business because they had followed me for a while and we're sorry it couldn't work out and I'm like me too and it just ended up ended up great <laughs> like because I was not gonna let it be hostile <laughs> like I have learned my lesson but okay that's it that's all I have to say <laughs> don't go to court <laughs> don't do it but still find a happy medium of sticking up for yourself <laughs> um I guess that's what we've learned here okay well I hope this has helped and I will see you next week thanks so much for for listening to the Artist Academy podcast. <laughs>